Hey guys, this gizmo here is a South Korean IR laser aiming module made by a company called DI Optical that also produces red dots for the South Korean military. It shouldn't come as a surprise that South Korea has a lot of domestically produced military hardware like lasers and optics because they are, first of all, an industrial powerhouse and they are also pretty close to a kooky northern neighbor. What might be a little surprising is that you can actually buy a lot of that stuff, even though nobody really thinks of South Korea as being a source of lasers and optics. We're getting pretty used to Chinese exports. Holosun makes a bunch of lasers and optics that you can buy readily on Amazon. A lot of electronic sites used to come from Japan, not so much anymore, although a lot of circuit boards in American-produced optics are still made in Japan, as far as I know. Japan is also where optical quality glass comes from, so a lot of scopes are also produced in Japan. But nobody really talks about South Korean firearm accessories. They're kind of just not in the conversation. This laser, the HLAD 3G, is the civilian legal version of what I am told is South Korea's currently issued military laser. The military version is called the MLAD and is of course a full power module. The HLAD is civilian restricted and has the usual power outputs we expect from civilian legal lasers. So a 0.7 milliwatt IR laser designator and a slightly less than 4 milliwatt IR illuminator. The HLAD also has a visible laser for daytime zeroing and all three emitters are slaved to the same optical bench and are adjusted with one set of turrets. The HLAD and MLAD are both available in the United States, although they're not super easy to come by. You can get these both from US Night Vision. If you've got law enforcement credentials, they will sell you a full power MLAD. If you're a civilian, they'll sell you a reduced power HLAD. There's not a lot of on paper appeal to this thing though, because it's really expensive, but it's still just a civilian legal laser unit, essentially exactly the same as a Holosun LS321. Last time I checked, you can still get the Holosun LS321 for at or slightly under 700 bucks if you know where to look, whereas the HLAD sells for $1,700. The HLAD 3G and a Holosun LS321 both have the same functions and they both have the same rated output. An IR laser designator of 0.7 milliwatts, an IR illuminator of less than 4 milliwatts, and a visible laser of less than 5 milliwatts. The only obvious advantage of the HLAD is that it looks much cooler than a Holosun LS321 and it's slightly smaller and lower profile. Definitely not worth an extra thousand dollars. The HLAD does have some strange performance quirks that do a little bit to make up for that massive price discrepancy. We'll talk about those a little bit later. First of all, let's go over the unit itself. This is a relatively compact laser unit. It's not very wide and it's not as tall as the Holosun LS321 and it weighs about the same as an equivalent Holosun or Steiner unit. This thing is powered by a CR123 battery installed at the front. There is a switch at the back left to control the modes. There is the usual focus wheel on the back right, very similar to the layout of a Holosun. It has a crane compatible laser plug at the back. It does have two blue lockout safety screws to prevent you from accessing the high vis laser and the high illuminator and IR laser. Those are almost definitely just a holdover from the full power MLAD because as a civilian restricted laser, even in full power mode, it's still extremely anemic. If you don't want to use a remote switch, there is a top mounted fire button and it has the same switchology as a Holosun or Steiner. Hold the button down for momentary, double click it for constant on. Although the double click feature is a little bit hard to access because the button is pretty soft. In terms of form factor, the HLAD has two advantages over the Holosun LS321. First of all, it sits off to the right side of the rail, so this will clear a front sight base, unlike the Holosun. The Holosun multifunction units like the LS321, LE321, and the 420 series don't have a centerline laser and illuminator. It is slightly offset to the right, but not offset enough to clear a front sight base. You'll get quite a lot of splash from both the laser and the illuminator if you try to use one on a rifle with a front sight. If you don't have a front sight, then the Holosun form factor is pretty good. It gives you less mechanical offset to worry about, and it also keeps the laser perfectly centered over the top rail, compared to the HLAD, which hangs off pretty far to the right side and not at all to the left side. The other nice feature of the HLAD versus the Holosun is that instead of the shitty QD lever that Holosun uses on all of their lasers, this just has a regular cross bolt and thumb screw. It's way more durable long term, and it also allows you to put quite a lot more torque on the rail and get a much more solid attachment. Properly tightening it though requires creative use of a screwdriver or some kind of a spanner head wrench because there is some sort of a little plug inside of the nut that prevents you from tightening it fully with like a coin or a screwdriver. I have no idea why they do that, but it's also a problem on one of the DI optical red dots that I've been testing out. The adjustment turrets have a pretty nice click to them and they're pretty well protected. You can either adjust them with a slot head screwdriver or with a little snake eyes adjustment spanner head type wrench. 
The h light also comes with a little turret adjuster tool that screws into the side of the laser, so you can take it off, adjust your zero, and then put it right back where it is for safekeeping. Unfortunately, it's not as safely kept as you might hope, and on the first night we took this thing out, I did manage to lose the adjuster. Very sorry to the guy who loaned me this to review, but your adjustment tool is in a gravel pit somewhere in Oregon. So mechanically, this thing has a few improvements over the Hollow Sun series of lasers. Aesthetically, it also looks quite a lot cooler than most of the Hollow Sun lasers. This has a matte non-reflective finish, unlike the extremely shiny finish on the LS321, but it's still just made out of aluminum, not like the titanium bodies of the LE321. I think if I could get my hands on the full power version of this, I would like it quite a bit. This thing is the right form factor with the right controls and switchology. I like the positioning of the focus wheel. I like the fact that all of the emitters are on one optical bench, unlike, for example, the D-balls that have a split arrangement with the illuminator on one side and the lasers on the other. Similar to the Hollow Sun lasers, you get all three emitters packed into one side of the device and covered by one very robust rubber lens cover. None of that really matters, though, because the version of this laser I can get without law enforcement credentials is the H-LAD, not the M-LAD. This one has the same power output as a Hollow Sun, but it costs an extra thousand dollars. Or does it? The actual performance of the H-LAD is not what you expect from just reading the spec sheet. That's good and bad. The bad is that the visible laser component of the H-LAD is much weaker than any other visible laser I have access to. It doesn't even compare favorably to other civilian legal visible lasers. The IR designator and IR illuminator are also pretty weak, very similar to the performance of the Holosun LS321. The difference is that the HLAD, for some reason, can focus down much, much tighter than a Holosun LS321 or even a D-Ball A3 or I2. The illuminator on the HLAD at its most unfocused is still very similar to full focus on a Holosun LS321. Focused all the way down, it gets extremely tight, not quite as tight as a full power PEC-15 or a full power D-Ball. Those can focus down so much that they essentially turn the illuminator into a second laser designator, but still significantly tighter than, for example, the two degree spill on a D-Ball D2 or a MAL C1 at full focus, and no comparison to the illuminator focus on a civilian legal D-Ball or a hollow sun laser. It's crazy how focused the h light illuminator can get, which should allow it to make better use of that less than 4 milliwatts illuminator performance than, for example, the Holosun LS321 or a D-Ball I2. There is just one catch, though. The illuminator pattern on the h light is so uneven that even when you focus it way down and you think you're getting a much brighter hotspot, mostly what you end up with is a very bright ring around the outside of the illuminator and not a lot of illumination in the center of the pattern. This isn't the same issue as the speckling and petri dish effect that you get on a lot of D-Ball illuminators, and it's still certainly bright and focused and even enough to outperform the Holosun LS321. But it's still pretty clear that having the ability to focus the illuminator down to that level isn't really all that useful if you don't have the horsepower to back it up. I found that the illumination on the D-Ball i2 was significantly more usable. It's brighter overall, and it's a very clean, even pattern, and that makes a big difference. When I first started testing the HLAD, I thought that that increased illuminator focus would give this thing improved range over a D-Ball I2, but it turns out, in practice, to have a slightly reduced effective range. The D-Ball I2 is still the most effective of the civilian legal laser-based IR illuminators. I know that's a lot of caveats, but that's sort of the market we're playing with. And even that probably will only get you out to about 100 yards maximum. If you want to go farther than that, you either have to dip your toes into the gray market or invest in a very expensive or very bulky unit like a Mall C1 or a D-Ball D2. So overall, I really cannot recommend the HLAD unless you happen to get a really screaming deal on one, and by that I mean you're paying more like $1,000 or less, not $1,700. That seems outrageous for the performance you're getting. The form factor is good, the build quality seems to be about on par with the Hollow Sun, which is to say slightly better than a Steiner unit. The layout, the controls, the focus wheel, all that stuff's really excellent on this thing. But yeah, $1,700 for a civilian-powered IR laser device is a really tough pill to swallow. And that illumination pattern is just so uneven that it's really hard to take advantage of. There's pretty much one sweet spot within the illuminator focus wheel, and you might as well just find it and leave it there. Anything to either side of that is probably going to give you a bright ring around the edge, and maybe a smaller bright ring somewhere in the center. It's just not clean, and it really doesn't contribute to usability at all. All right, thank you guys for watching. Thank you to the viewer who sent this thing in for me to review. I really hope you didn't pay full price for this thing, but it is cool looking, and you probably are going to be one of the only people who has one. So, 
consolation prize, I guess. If you like this channel, please subscribe to it because then you get to watch more videos as a reward. If you'd like to support me more directly, there's a link in the video description to my Subscribestar page. If you become a substar, you will get access to early videos as well as some special bonus videos. You'll also be able to watch the archived live show that I do with Mr. Brassfax. You might also get some bonus pictures of my timeshare cat who walked his fat ass through the frame a little bit earlier in the video as well as access to a secret Discord channel where there are even more pictures of my timeshare cat walking his fat ass across the camera. He's in the room with me right now, and he has been getting pretty tubby, which is why I'm calling him out like this on the internet. Okay, see you guys next time.